Welcome, everyone, and you are listening to Deep Talk on KCMO, Talk Radio 710 and 103.7 FM. I'm Vasavi, and we are live today. So happy Father's Day to all the wonderful fathers out there. I want to especially thank my father, Shanti Kumar, for being the model man in my life from day one. I know he's listening right now, so I just want to tell you, Parabha, that I am who I am because of you. You aspire me to live in line with my values, not by your words, but by your actions. Each and every day since I was a kid, you showed me, not told me, how a person of integrity, love, and kindness should live. And I honor you for the man that you are and honor you for the father that you've been to me and my sister Pallavi and the husband that you have been to my mother, Gita. So I am truly, truly blessed to be your daughter, and I love you very much. So before we get into today's topic and my amazing guest, here's the real deal. We are three days away from my Source of Your Success program, and I have a few spots available. And let me tell you, when you sign up, I'm not only going to give you three one-on-one sessions. I'm going to give you six one-on-one coaching sessions because I created this program so that you would be fully supported. I want you to think of a three-legged stool. If one leg is wobbly, that stool isn't going to sit straight. So in this program, I made sure that you have the group calls, you have the one-on-one interaction with me, you have the community, you have the offline homework and assignments. You know, there's really no way that you can hide. So go to sourceofyoursuccess.com to read more and take action because action is the antidote to despair, as Joan Baez says, and movement is magic. Or you can give me a call at 913-951-1764, and I'd love to answer any of your questions or email me personally at vasavi at vasavikumar.com. Okay, so my guest today, what can I say except that his book changed my life? His book transformed my perception of what is God, who is God, and who I am in relation to God. His book helped me see that there is nothing to fear and that joy, love, and truth is real. Neil Donald Walsh is my guest today, and he's a modern-day spiritual messenger whose words continue to touch the world in profound ways. You know, he had an early interest in religion and a deeply felt connection to spirituality, and You know, he spent the majority of his life thriving professionally, yet searching for spiritual meaning before beginning his now famous Conversation with God books. And I, if you haven't read his series of Conversation with God books or any of his other books, I highly recommend you do. You know, book one changed my life and book two and book three did the same. Um, And his Conversation with God series of books, just so you know how much it has resonated with people, it's been translated into 37 languages, touching millions of lives and inspiring just those important changes that we need to make in our day-to-day lives. And um, his Conversation with God series has truly redefined this concept of God and shifted spiritual paradigms around the globe. And um, because he's had such an enormous response to all of his writings, he's actually created a Conversations with God Foundation, which is a nonprofit educational organization dedicated to inspiring the world to help itself move from violence to peace, from confusion to clarity, and from anger to love. So he truly is a man of service. So don't go anywhere. And when we get back, my guest, Neil Donald Walsh, will be here with us. Oh, and if you have any questions about my upcoming coaching program, Like I said, go to sourceofyoursuccess.com or give me a call at 913-951-1764. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Deep Talk on KCMO Talk Radio 710 and 103.7 FM. KCMO is Talk Radio 710, now on FM at 103.7, weeknights at 8, the new home of The Laura Ingram Show. Are you concerned about the relationship between American Muslims and the rest of, of society here? I'm just cl- I'm just glad that we've clarified that it's Muslim now and not Muslim. I, I get very confused. Peking, Beijing, Bombay, Mumbai, Muslim, Muslim. I can't even follow it. Laura Ingram, only on KCMO Talk Radio 710, and now 103.7 FM. Don't be stranded long. Call Overland Tow when your car strands you. 722-3505. Hey, folks, Dave here. Did you know kitchens and bathrooms are the most used rooms in a house? During their 40-plus years in business, Mr. Remodeler has helped countless homeowners keep their kitchens and bathrooms looking great with the latest designs, styles, and colors. 
We couldn't be happier with Mr. Remodeler. The Mr. Remodeler crew bent over backwards to satisfy our needs. They really went out of their way to be sure everything was the way we wanted it. Make your home a more comfortable place to live. Let Mr. Remodeler's trustworthy design experts put the proper solutions in place for your family. Your company has done three projects for me, and they all came out great. The workmen on the job were exceptional. I was extremely happy with their knowledge, attitude, workmanship, and interest in the quality. So if I can help you, give me a call. Missouri, 453-3049, Kansas, 362-7166. And on the web, MrRemodeler.com. Thanks. This is Mike Shannon for Arvin Pfeffer, Kansas City's long-term care insurance specialist. Arvin has some new information and data that will especially interest members of the baby boom generation. It's the Long-Term Care Insurance Almanac and Book of Facts. To get your copy cost-free and obligation-free, call Arvin anytime, 913-722-7200. It contains answers to important questions about long-term care insurance, even answers to questions you probably didn't know you had. Review the Almanac, then if you want to know more, call Arvin, 913-722-7200. There's no pressure, Arvin will never sell you a policy on your first visit, and Arvin will even tell you if you don't need one. The average cost of long-term care is now $75,000 a year and headed higher. My wife and I bought policies from Arvin, and I can assure you it's a small price for peace of mind. Arvin can't predict your future, but he can sure help you protect it. Arvin Pfeffer, 913-722-7200 and at arvinonline.com. When it comes to assisted living, are you going to trust your mom or dad to a giant corporation? Of course not. Hi, this is Frank Curtis. Shawnee Heartland is the boutique community of choice. A community with heart. Privately owned and operated since 2000. Log on to ShawneeHeartlandAL.com. Shawnee Heartland Assisted Living. We're not a giant corporation. We're family. By August of next year, your medical billing and coding methods become critical to the financial success of your practice. That's when America converts to ICD-10, and your coders must be certified in over 140,000 new codes. Certification is time-consuming and costly, and you risk an increase in claim denials. Purpose Billing Services is your billing and coding solution. Their staff is certified and experienced. Contact them for a free quote today, 913-707-8710, or visit them on the web at PurposeBilling.com. You fix your patients' aches and pains, and they fix yours. Did you know you could earn a transfer discount just by switching your motorcycle policy over to GEICO? And if you already insure your car with GEICO, you could even get a multi-policy discount. I've always wondered what it's like to ride a motorcycle, to ride my steel horse across the land, fighting crime alongside a tall brunette, Francesca. Sorry, my mind went to a strange place there. Where was I? All the GEICO motorcycle discounts. Right. Call GEICO or visit GEICO.com today to see how much our discounts could save you. When you're in the hospital for surgery, you're asked a lot of questions by a lot of different people, all of whom have your well-being in mind. The success of your anesthesia experience depends on how completely you answer the confidential questions asked by your certified registered nurse anesthetist. Be honest about your medical history, whether you smoke, drink, take drugs, or have been dieting. Your safety depends on it. A public service message from the American Association of Nurse Anesthetists. This is Kansas City's talk station, Talk Radio 710, now on FM at 103.7. We're back, and you're tuned in to Deep Talk on KCMO Talk Radio 710 and 103.7 FM. There comes a time in different seasons of our life where someone steps out so bold, so strong, and so deeply connected with the truth of you know all that there was, all that there is, and all that there ever will be. And that someone is my guest today, Neil Donald Walsh, author of Conversations with God. You know, it was um, it was a pleasure. I actually got to meet him in person last week in Chicago at the Celebrate Your Life conference, and it's my deepest honor to have him here today. Thank you so much, Neil, for being on the show today. Well, thank you. It's very lovely for you to have me here. I'd like to put something out there before we begin, if I may, and just say that I don't really feel that I am in touch with the truth. I think it's dangerous to for me to assert that, which is why I do not. I think that I'm in touch with my truth, with mm. my awareness, with what is true for me, but I would never and never have 
indicate it to anyone that it should be true for anyone else. I simply allow people to know what my personal experience has been, and if they wish to explore that, if they wish to take a look at it, if they have some curiosity about it and would just like to look into it, that's wonderful. And if after they do, they find out, you know what, this resonates very closely with my truth as well, then where I think we're on the right track, and many people have felt that, but I, I don't. Uh, I try very hard not to assert that somehow I'm in touch with the truth, mm-hmm. capital T, because I, I don't know that the truth exists. That is, one of the statements that was made in conversations with God is, "There's no such thing as absolute truth." Thank you so much for clarifying that. You know what? And and you are so right that we all have our own truth to discover and. Your truth, which which is so personal to you, has resonated with so many people. So thank you so much for just, you know, saying that and just having everyone know that, you know, this is your truth that we're speaking about. And so when, we, when we're talking about your conversations with God that you've had, you know, can you share with our listeners, how did this all start? Well, sure. I was going through a period of time in my life when nothing was working. Uh, typically, people turn to God when everything else is not going well. Mm-hmm. And so... That was true in my case. My my health had gone rapidly downhill. I was facing a number of uh, health, uh, I want to say health crises, in that I had a broken neck in a car accident, and uh, I almost died. I uh, escaped without long-term consequences, but it was a miracle, actually, that I did. In addition, I I was out of work. I I could not do anything uh, because of my broken neck. And so I, I was, you know, just unemployed, and my relationship with my significant other was falling apart all at the same time, all in the same five-month period. Mm-hmm. And so I just, I just kind of woke up one night, and I thought, what, you know, what does it take to make life work? I was not a young man. I was not, you know, a callow youth. I was 50 years old and half, half century on the planet. I would have thought that by then I might have had my act together, so mm-hmm. to speak. But no, everything was falling apart. So I kind of called out to God one night uh, in a fit of anger, frankly. I wasn't even nice about it. I just sat on the couch. It was 4.30 in the morning. And I was was like, you know, what does it take to make life work? And what have I done to deserve a life of such continuing struggle? Somebody tell me the rules. I'll play. Just give me the rule book. And uh, I was you know, really angry. And I, I fell asleep on the couch. Because uh, I was just walking around the house trying to figure out some answers, and I, and then I heard a voice over my right shoulder, and it was a, a voice just as clear as anything in my life, and it simply said, "Do you really want answers to all of these questions, or are you just venting?" And I, and I, and I thought, "Wow, yeah, I, you know, I, I do want answers, but you know." I don't know where to find them. I don't know where to get them. And I thought, okay, I'm talking to myself here, except the voice was physical in the room, such that I was startled. I, I, I thought, who's, who's coming to my, into my house? And, uh, but, of course, there was no one there. But my, my, my whole being was suddenly filled with a sense of peace and calmness. And, uh, and this voice continued. It then began to move, I want to say, inside of me, it no longer felt like it was over my right shoulder in the room, but rather speaking interiorly to me. And it said, ask me any question. Mm-hmm. And I will give you the answer. And so I did. I started, and, and I had, there was a, as it happened, there was a yellow legal pad on the table in front of me, on the coffee table. And I grabbed it because the stuff I was hearing was so, was so uh, extraordinary that I thought, I'm going to take this down because when I get up in the morning, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to forget all of this. But I, I, I just got to ask you, though, because you, you said you heard this voice, like it was, it was physically there. At, at some point, did you think you were hallucinating? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, of course I did. Our first, my, my first uh, uh, experience was fear. I thought, somebody has come into my home. Then I realized there was no one there. Then my second experience was, oh, great, I'm going out of my mind. You know, I've, I've lost it. I, I'm, I'm imagining things. And then uh, the third experience was of such peace and such a tranquility, I can't even explain it to you. It brought literally tears of the kind of tears you have when, when of great relief, tears of enormous relief, just and of great inner joy. And I thought, you know what? I don't care. 
if it's making me feel like this, I don't care if I'm hallucinating. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not on any hallucinatory drugs. I'm not taking anything. So if this is a natural experience, you know, whatever, I'm going to go into it because it, it felt so good. And so I began to just write what I was hearing in answer to my questions. And the answers that I received to those very early questions were so phenomenal and so insightful that, of course, they brought up other questions. So I would write the next question, and I would get an answer immediately. But that answer would generate another question. And before I knew it, I was involved in an on-paper conversation, a two-way uh, you know, exchange, a dialogue with God, if you please. Mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't want to stop. I did. I said it was at 4.20 in the morning when I started this. It was 8.15 in the morning when I finally stopped. And I thought, God, I, I could do this all day, you know, but, but I've got to get on with my life. So I thought, well, wasn't that an interesting experience of just somehow accessing something or someone or some place in my psyche, who knows what it was, but bringing me these remarkable answers and this great sense of inner tranquility and inner peace. Mm. I put my legal pad aside, and I got on with my life. But the next morning, at 4.23 in the morning, same thing happened. That is, I was awakened in this case, awakened and like, you know, get back to the, get back to, the urge was get back to the writing. So I went back to the legal pad, went back to the couch, actually, just to get into the same space, picked up my yellow legal pad, and I said, I picked up where I left off. That went on for about three months straight, every night at 4.20 or 4.25 in the morning. I couldn't understand, by the way, what was significant about that. And then about four months later, I had a, I had need to get my birth certificate. And uh, so I, I wrote to my county where I was born in Wisconsin, and they sent me a copy of the birth certificate, which they do for like a $25 fee or whatever. And I got the copy, and I opened it up, and I was just looking at it, and it said, you know, time of birth, 4.23 a.m. Wow, wow. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So this is my rebirth, if you please. And, yeah. you know, it was just a, an amazing experience. And so I, anyway, I wrote all this stuff down, and I, and I went out and bought more, more legal pads because I was running out of paper, and, and, and I, I was just writing, writing, writing every morning for two or three months until I had literally several hundred pages of handwritten dialogue back and forth. And uh, so I, and, but at one point in, in the uh, dialogue, it said, this will one day become a book. And I thought, oh, yes, of course. You and a hundred other people are going to send your middle-of-the-night mental meanderings to a publisher <laughs> who's going to say, we have to get this out at once. This man is talking to God. <laughs> you know, of course, it didn't even occur to me, but I thought, you know what I thought? I thought, just to see how valid this information is that I'm getting, I'm going to send it to a publisher just as a kind of a test, you know? First, I'm angry with God. Now I'm going to test God. We'll see about that. Mm-hmm. So I actually had it uh, keyboarded. I, w- um, I, I knew somebody who was a stenographer, and so she was kind enough to keyboard the information for me. And she came to me and she said, Neil, Neil, what is this? What is, where are you getting this? This is incredible stuff. I can't even get back to my work. I mean, I can't wait to the next for the next pages where is this coming from? I said, you know, don't ask me. I, I'm just taking it down, like taking dictation. Well, when we had a, a f- enough pages of it uh, uh, typewritten, we, in fact, sent it off to a publisher. And the rest, as they say, uh, is publishing history. They, they read the typewritten manuscript, immediately put it out into the world. They didn't, they didn't even wait two weeks. It was just out there immediately. And, you know, I'm not bragging. I'm just telling the book made was on the New York Times bestseller list within 30 days, and it stayed there for two and a half years yes. consecutively. So, you know, Neil, p- a part of um, why I love to interview authors is because I get to read or reread their books again. So I actually traveled to Toronto this past weekend. Um, I left on Thursday, came back yesterday, and I got to read your book all over again. So I have a few key points from the book that I would like some clarity on because I read it again and I said, what does that mean? I need to know what it meant for you when you received this answer. You know, um, you said in the book that, you know, as you were conversing with God, you said, you know, I've searched for the path to God my whole life and I have found it. You know, so what is the true path to God as far as your truth is concerned? inwardly to the space inside of each uh, and every one of us 
that is uh, deeply connected to all that is. Uh, the, the path to God I've, I've learned in my own experience is not an outward path where I go to you know, the synagogue or the temple or the cathedral or some other holy place. Those are wonderful things to do, by the way. I'm not suggesting for a minute that people should not do that. Mm-hmm. But for me, I was unable to find the experience of God that I, that, for which my soul and heart yearned in those places. In fact, quite to the contrary, in some of those places, I found things that were very unlike God. People yelling and screaming, for, well, I shouldn't say yelling and screaming, but certainly raising their voice, for sure, yeah. from, the, from the pulpit, talking about how I was going to go to hell if this happened or if I didn't do that right or whatever. And I, you know, and as a child and, and as a young person, I thought, gosh, I this doesn't feel like God to me. I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not sure. So I was, you know, I didn't, I didn't uh, choose to be a God-fearing person. I didn't think that fear would be an, an appropriate tool for God to use uh, in order to draw people to him. So I kind of let, let go of that idea of God. But what, uh, So the, the path that I have found is a path of going simply within my own self, finding a quiet time and a quiet way to just commune within, because I've come to understand that that which is divine resides within me and within every living thing, that, in fact, every living thing is that which is divine. So if I just took the time to be quiet with myself on a regular basis and to look deeply into life as I was experiencing it, uh, divinity would reveal itself to me, through me. So I think that my, my answer has been to continue to turn within and to embrace the highest notion and the grandest idea I ever had about God. Now here, here just, just to give you an idea about that, I've always thought that God was the most loving, caring, compassionate, forgiving, unconditionally loving entity in the universe. And nothing is going to change my mind about that. God is not a punishing, damning, condemning, rigid, rule-making, and, and, and you know, punish you with everlasting damnation being if you break the rules. That is not what God is in my experience. And so I, I found that particular God, someone wrote me a letter a few, a few years ago, in which they said, Dear Neil, Thank you for introducing me at last to a God I can fall in love with. Wow. So you talked about how you see that the divine is in you. And one in, in one of the conversations that you had with God, um, I think it was towards the middle of the book, but in response to one of your questions, and I forgot what the question was, Neil, but the response that you received was, my purpose for you is that you should know yourself as me with the capital M. So my question is, it's, I'm, I'm going to collapse two questions. Does that mean that God wants us humans to know that we are divine and that we are God? Yes, that's exactly and precisely what it means. What God, you see, there's, there's been one mistake, the, the conversations with God material made it clear to me, one mistake that humanity has made from really, I want to say, the beginning of time, to use a huge phrase, but from the very earliest days of humanity's awareness of itself, that, that is, even from the caveman days, as we began to look into you know, pools of water and see our reflection and reflect upon who we are as entities. And that mistake has been the mistake of separation. We, we created a separation theology, and I can get into how we did that if you want, but we created a separation theology on this planet that says that that which we call today God is over there, and we are over here, and we are separate from each other. We are the, some religions would have it be that we are the creations of God, but other than that, we have no relationship to God. And so separation theology has created a separation cosmology, that is a cosmological way of looking at life that says everything is separate from everything else. Integrated, but separate parts nonetheless. So wait, so hold on, Neil. Don't go anywhere because this is such an important conversation that we're having. Guys, more with Neil Donald Walsh when we get back, author of Conversations with God. You are listening to Deep Talk on KCMO, Talk Radio 710 and 103.7 FM. 
It started with helping folks out with transportation around the holidays with Cars for Christmas. It's expanded to all year round with Cars for Heroes, honoring our men and women who've served in the military. If you have a car to donate or know of a vet in need of reliable transportation, go to cars, the number four, Christmas.org and click on the Kansas City button. Let's help those who have given so much. Cars, the number four, Christmas.org and click on the Kansas City button. It's Cars for Heroes. Fox News Radio, I'm Liz White. Rodney King, the man at the center of the L.A. riots in 1991, has died. King's videotaped beating by L.A. police was broadcast around the world. At the height of the riots that followed, King made a now well-known plea for peace. I just want to say, you know, can we can we all get along? Can we can we get along? King's fiance reportedly found him at the bottom of a pool. He was 47. His book, The Riot Within, was published this year. Voting's over in Greek parliamentary elections. The outcome could have a ripple effect on Europe's debt crisis, world markets, and your wallet. It does matter what happens in Greece because it matters. What, what affects Greece affects Europe. What affects Europe affects your 401k plan. Ed Butowski with Chapwood Capital Investments tallying's underway in a tight race. Fox News, we report. You decide. KCMO forecast from KCTV5. Partly cloudy, hot, and humid today with a high of 91 and a heat index in the mid-90s. We have a 20% chance for a few thunderstorms this afternoon as well. It's going to get even hotter tomorrow, mostly sunny on Monday with a high of 94 and a heat index in the upper 90s. Happy Father's Day to all the dads. I'm KCTV5 meteorologist Tom Walks. Most people list having a roof over your head as one of life's necessities. Make sure your roof is a good one by calling All American Roofing at 913-345-8000. All American Roofing will expertly take care of all your roofing and guttering needs. They do tile, slate, and composition all at affordable prices. So whether you want to re-roof your home or fix that annoying leak, All American Roofing can help you do it. For a free estimate, call All American Roofing at 913-345-8000. Who are you? What makes you tick? What makes your heart race? I want to know. You see, my purpose is to support you on your journey. My name is Vasavi Kumar, and I specialize in transformational coaching and speaking. Let's set up your 60-minute coaching session today. Call me at 913-951-1764. That's 913-951-1764. This is Sally Field for Save the Children. We've all seen the devastation the hurricanes have wrought. Now imagine how we can make it better. Imagine all the children from the hurricanes feeling safe again. Imagine all the children back with their families again. Imagine all the children going to school again. Please help us create lasting change for children here at home and around the world. Call 1-800-SAVE-THE-CHILDREN or visit savethechildren.org. Imagine we can save the children. Imagine. Hey, honey. Hi, Dad. What you drawing? It's our house. That's you. Oh. Me. Uh-huh. Mom and Josh. Wow. Playing ball. You are becoming quite the artist. When you're a kid, you don't know that home ownership builds communities, that owning a home contributes to higher self-esteem and better test scores. You just know that home is where you play, grow, and learn. The National Association of Realtors wants you to know that home ownership matters to our families, our neighborhoods, and our country. Learn more at houselogic.com slash homeownership. I knew that a sauna would be relaxing after a long, hard day, but when I started researching saunas, I was surprised. I never knew a sauna from saunasforbetterhealth.com could be so good for me. Go to saunasforbetterhealth.com and see for yourself. Their made-in-USA saunas harness the medical powers of far-infrared waves for remarkable health benefits. It helps remove toxins and actually speeds healing. The only problem at my house? <laughs> it's a race to see who can get into the sauna first. Start your road to a healthier lifestyle now. saunasforbetterhealth.com don't mind me. I'll just sit here quietly while you drive. <whistles> hey, so how many miles you got on this baby? Got a lot, huh? I'll be quiet. You know it doesn't have six-figure mileage on it? Every Honda certified used car. Yeah, Beach is a well-maintained late-model Honda. Each gets a grueling 150-point inspection, too. And I'll stop talking. Hey, this is where I get out anyway. So yeah, Honda certified used cars. Next best thing to new. Just saying. 
KCMO Talk Radio 710, now at 103.7 FM. The latest KCMO news and Fox News Radio every hour, only on KCMO. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Deep Talk on KCMO Talk Radio 710 and 103.7 FM. Um, we've just been talking to Neil Donald Walsh, and he's. Uh, we're going to keep continuing that conversation. You know, before we went to break, we were talking about how, um, you know, it's in in his conversation. What God had said to him was, you know, my purpose for you is that you should know yourself as me, and that we are that humans are divine, and that we are God. And um, just if anything in this conversation is resonating with you, you know, go to Neil's website. It, it's awesome. You can learn about his nonprofit. You can, you know, get any of his books there. Just see what, what he's up to. It's neildonaldwalsh.com. That's N-E-A-L-E, Donald Walsh, W-A-L-S-C-H. So, okay, Neil, before we get back into the, the conversation that we were just having about us being separate from God, like God's out there and we're over here, you know, as a practicing Hindu and a student of the Vedas and the Bhagavad Gita and all these scriptures that I was raised with, you know, I know I was taught at a very young age that there is no separation between this being that we call God and myself, that at the end of the day, there is just is, you know, there all there is, is just is that isness, you know, that that silence, that stillness. And now some would call me crazy or blasphemous that I would have the nerve to believe that I am a divine creator and that, in fact, I am uh, that I am God. I am equal to God. And but in reading your book, you know, I didn't feel so crazy anymore because that was some of the messaging that you received in your conversation with God. So why do you think it is so unacceptable for people to see themselves as as God, because it's unbelievable, and because the um, largest religions in the world deny that reality, and for, so for those two reasons, pe- people think that if they imagine themselves to be divine, uh, that they are violating God, that they are offending God in some way. One major religion, the Roman Catholic Church, t- teaches that Satan was created, that, that Satan was a, a, a wonderful angel at the beginning, but imagined himself to be equal to God, mm. and for his hubris, he was sent to everlasting damnation. And now there's a battle going on for humanity's soul, a battle between Satan and God. That's the cosmology. That's the, that's the, that's the, uh, the whole cultural story that millions of people, not a few thousand, but actually probably billions of people uh, uh, have bought into. So it's fear that causes us to uh, step away from the notion that we and God are one. Now, I do want to quibble just just gently with one statement that you made, that you said something about, I'm equal to God. Mm -hmm. uh, Conversations with God does not say we are equal to God. It says we are divine. We are to God as a drop of the ocean is to the ocean itself. No one would, no one, no one would, would reasonably say that a drop of the ocean is equal to the ocean, it. but it would say it is identical to the ocean in composition and in substance. Okay, okay, so let me, I'm going to scratch that. So instead of equal, what we're saying is that we are identical. Yes, we're the okay. same as God. We are made of the same stuff. We, we, we are individuations of the divine. We are singularizations of the singularity. And, uh, and in, in that sense, we and God uh, are uh, the same, we're the same stuff. And if we understood that, if, if, if humanity simply embraced that notion, uh, imagine what it would, what it would uh, do in terms of our relationships with each other. If I thought that everyone I was talking to, everyone I was interacting with, to say nothing of everyone I was killing, as people do in wars and, uh, else, and other kinds of activities, was God itself. I mean, it, would, it would shift and change my entire relationship uh, with the world. But we, we have not done that because we live inside of a, where I was going a minute ago, we live inside of a cosmology that says everything is separate from everything else. Mm-hmm. Not just God and us separate, but everything is integrated, but nevertheless separate parts separate from each other. And that, that separation cosmology, which is based on a separation theology, has produced a separation psychology that is a psychological way of holding life as a process of separated parts trying to find a way to interact with each other without causing each other too much damage or pain. 
that separation psychology has produced a separation sociology that is entire societies globally that exist as billions of little elements that see themselves as having no particular relationship, certainly no intrinsic relationship of oneness with each other. And finally, such a separation sociology has produced a separation pathology, that is, pathological behaviors of self-destruction. Or to put it simply, we do things to each other we would never imagine doing to ourselves. If we saw each other as the self, if we saw all of life and God as part of who we are and we are part of that, we would never, never treat each other the way we do. Well, there's a fundamental question that we have to ask in life. Here's the fundamental question. How is it possible for 7 billion people to all say they want the same thing health, peace, prosperity, happiness, joy, love, opportunity, etc. We all have the same agenda. Nobody's agenda is any different. How is it possible in the first part of the 21st century for 7 billion sentient beings to say they all want the same thing and be unable to get it after trying for thousands of years? Is it possible, just possible, I ask, that there's something we don't fully understand here about God and about life and about who we are, the understanding of which would change everything. And that understanding is? We are all one. Hmm. There's no separation from anything to anything else. I was asked by Matt Lauer on the Today Show on NBC, Neil, you claim to have talked to God. If that's true, what is God's message to the world? Can you put it in one paragraph? We have only 30 seconds. <laughs> they always ask me these questions at the end of the show. <laughs> I said, Matt, I can answer the question in five words. He said, really? All right, then, ladies and gentlemen, God's message to the world in five words. Neil, you've got me all wrong. I remember you saying that in Chicago and I uh, at the conference, and I said, "Well, if we we have you all wrong, then then really, what is it that you desire? What is it that you want from us?" God, God does not want anything from us. I wrote a book called "What God Wants." Hmm. People may want to read that book. The book is called "What God Wants" because it answers the quintessential question: What does God want? What does God require? What does God demand? What does God seek from us? And the answer is nothing in particular except the full expression. God's preference for us, God's great joy, is to express itself. That life expresses life through the process of life itself. And so if God wants anything from us, it's simply that we would express and have the opportunity and the ability to experience our own magnificence fully, utterly, and completely in any moment of our particular lifetime. I'm writing a book right now called The Only Thing That Matters, and it answers the question you've just asked. What really is the only thing that matters? And the book says the only thing that matters is that we have an opportunity and use our life, use this particular lifetime, this time we have on earth, as an opportunity for us to express and experience in every moment that we possibly can the highest and grandest notion we ever had about who we are. If we did that, If everyone hearing my voice right now, whatever they believe, whether they think that I'm totally crazy, off my rocker, how could I have possibly talked to God, whether they're Hindus or Jews or Catholics or Protestants or or Muslims or whatever they are, or no religion at all, if we simply did what I just said, none of the rest of that would matter, no labels would matter, no arguments would take place, we would simply create heaven on earth in one generation. What stops us from doing that? Let that be the question of the day. What stops us from using every moment of our life to express the grandest notion we ever had about who we are and who everyone else is? Do you think what stops us um, differs from person to person, or do you think it's a universal? It's universal. It's fear. Okay. We're afraid that if we ever show up in every moment as the grandest notion of who we are, and if we give the benefit of the doubt that way to others, we will be run over in life. We'll lose whatever it is we think we have to desperately try to hold on to, and we will create chaos on the planet. The truth is, we'll bring peace 
to the planet. Every year, people of all religions send Christmas cards around saying, peace on earth, for God's sake, can't we do it at least one time? Peace on earth, goodwill to humans everywhere. And we have been unable to do that after thousands of years of trying. Is it possible that there's something we don't fully understand here? The understanding of which would change everything. You mean that we have to start seeing ourselves the way we want to be, our highest vision of who we are and could become, and then when we actually hold that in our mind, then we grow towards becoming that, or is there more to it? There's more to it because the grander that we imagine ourselves to be and the greater our expression of that, the grander is the opportunity to express more of that. That is, reality is a constantly expanding experience, like love. You would think that love is a constant, an absolute, but love is not an absolute. You love someone today and tomorrow, you love them more. And in 50 years, after 50 years of marriage, you look at your wife and you say, I love you now more than ever. That's how life is. The grander we are, the grander we become. The grander we are, the grander we become, and the grander we can love? And be who we are, which is love. Yes, of course. Okay, so... You know, Neil, knowing what you know and experiencing what you have experienced and really creating what you have created up until this point in your life, is there anything that worries or scares you? No, not in the sense that you mean the word. The only worry that I have in my life is that my ego will cause me to imagine for one moment that I'm somehow better, brighter, grander, bigger, or more than anybody else. So if I have any fear at all, it's that my ego would get the best of me. But beyond that, no, I don't fear death. I don't fear anything that happens in life. Why would I fear anything? My, My purpose in life is not to somehow survive, but rather to be the grandest notion I ever held about who I am. You know, I hold that idea about everyone else at the same time. I just want to acknowledge you for sharing that, you know, to all our listeners that you, your your worries that your ego will somehow think that, you know, um, actually, when we were in Chicago, my mother said to me, you know, I was um, I was counseling a cousin of mine and, and 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 my mother said to me, you know, I worry about you, you know, because you know so much that you're going to become arrogant. She said that to me. She goes that you're going to be arrogant. So I I want to I want to ask you, and I I want to tap into your wisdom, you know. So if that is your biggest worry, that your ego will somehow make you think that you're better. How do you keep that in check? Memory. <laughs> All I have to do is remember how I've acted in my life. Mm. All I have to do is just think of any one of a thousand moments that I can call to my memory right now, of moments in which I've acted beyond bad. Mm. when I've mistreated people, when I've been unkind, when I've not been a a very nice human being at all, and I've got a thousand such moments, big and small in my life. Memory is what stops me from imagining that I'm somehow bigger, better, or more than anyone else. Then, after calling to mind all of those moments, those deep, dark secrets of my life, then I move into forgiveness. Neil, I forgive you. You simply didn't know You simply didn't understand. Mm. Even as I would forgive my child, my four-year-old, for breaking the family heirloom and knocking it off the mantelpiece, the child looks up at me and says, I'm sorry, Daddy, I'm so sorry. So memory, so remember that part of yourself that maybe where you let your ego kind of run the show and then forgive yourself as you would forgive a four-year-old child. And not, not just when I let my ego run the show, but when I let my total human desires run the show. When I just decided that I, you know, that, that what I wanted right here, right now, no matter who got hurt, and no matter how bad it felt to the other person, I'm going for it. And I'm, you know, I've, I've done those things in my life. I'm a 68 year old man, and I've done those things in my life, and I'm not proud of them. I'm not happy about them, but I savor them nonetheless because each step up the mountaintop gets us closer to the top, to the top. And yes, sometimes we stumble, and sometimes we hurt other people, and so we ask forgiveness. Lastly, Neil, what is the most important message, as you see it, of book one? We are all one. We are all one. Neil, thank you so much, guys. If you want to learn more about Neil, his Conversations with God book, all of his events, his nonprofit organization, go to neildonaldwalsh.com, N-E-A-L-E, Donald, W-A-L-S-C-H. 
Neil, it was an absolute honor to have you on the show. Thank you so much for taking the time out on Father's Day to be here and speak with me and all of our listeners. And you truly are a gift and a blessing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, Neil. Don't go anywhere, guys. When we get back, I'll be wrapping it up with my favorite quote and how to apply the deeper message into your life. And don't forget that there is still time to register for my coaching program. So visit sourceofyoursuccess.com. You're listening to Deep Talk on KCMO Talk Radio 710 and 103.7 FM. KCMO Talk Radio 710, now on FM at 103.7. Here, Dave Ramsey, it is new time, weekdays 9 to 11. She said, you Dave Ramsey people are like a crazy cult. <laughs> yeah, they're all shaving their heads so they look like me. <laughs> it's a cult. It's a cult. Yes, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. It just doesn't meet the guidelines of a cult. The Dave Ramsey Show on KCMO. Talk Radio 710. And now 103.7 FM. Vasavi Kumar knows one thing for sure. She is no expert. Instead, she embodies and radiates acceptance, vulnerability, hope, and love. Drawing from a lifetime of awareness and the primal understanding that at our very core, we crave connection and truth. Vasavi knows that by sharing her authentic self, she creates a safe place for others to not only discover, but speak their own truth. Knowing that the relationships we seek begin first within, Vasavi delivers presentations that not only uplift and inspire, but encourage each attendee to dig deep, cast away doubt, and claim the truly radiant self they've too often buried under layers of expectations, disappointments, and self-criticism. To learn more about how Vasavi can support you in getting you out of your own way, visit her at vasavikumar.com or give her a call at 913-951-1764 today. vasavikumar.com, 913-951-1764. When it comes to assisted living, are you going to trust your mom or dad to a giant corporation? Of course not. Hi, this is Frank Curtis. Shawnee Heartland is the boutique community of choice. A community with heart. Privately owned and operated since 2000. Log on to ShawneeHeartlandAL.com. Shawnee Heartland Assisted Living. We're not a giant corporation. We're family. It's probably not a stretch to say it's getting harder and more complicated every day to operate a business. It's been said that all problems can be resolved by revenue. The best news is the formula for increasing sales is easy to understand and it's free. Thousands of businesses have discovered and followed this formula for success and you can too. To learn this four-step formula, simply visit CumulusRadio.com. Go to CumulusRadio.com and learn our four simple steps. CumulusRadio.com. You know your business. We know marketing. Did you know you could earn a transfer discount just by switching your motorcycle policy over to GEICO? And if you already insure your car with GEICO, you could even get a multi-policy discount. I've always wondered what it's like to ride a motorcycle, to ride my steel horse across the land, fighting crime alongside a tall brunette, Francesca. Sorry, my mind went to a strange place there. Where was I? All the GEICO motorcycle discounts. Right. Call GEICO or visit GEICO.com today to see how much our discounts could save you. When you're in the hospital for surgery, you're asked a lot of questions by a lot of different people, all of whom have your well-being in mind. The success of your anesthesia experience depends on how completely you answer the confidential questions asked by your certified registered nurse anesthetist. Be honest about your medical history, whether you smoke, drink, take drugs, or have been dieting. Your safety depends on it. A public service message from the American Association of Nurse Anesthetists. When you listen to other talk stations, you start believing the bias. When you start to believe the bias, you find yourself hanging out in drum circles. Don't occupy public places with your new hippie friends. Listen to KCMO Talk Radio 710. And now 103.7 FM. Today's deal, Paranormal Adventures, 50% off. Go to SweetJack.com for a ghost tour with Paranormal Adventures. Sweet Jack. Now that's a real sweet deal. SweetJack.com. By August of next year, your medical billing and coding methods become critical to the financial success of your practice. That's when American converts to ICD-10, and your coders must be certified in over 140,000 new codes. Certification is time-consuming and costly, and you risk an increase in claim denials. Purpose Billing Services is your billing and coding solution. Their staff is certified and experienced. Contact them for a free quote today, 913 707 8710 or visit them on the web at purposebilling.com. 
You fix your patients' aches and pains, and they fix yours. The KCMO Morning Show. I want the mini cheeseburger crust pizza. Greg Knapp, mornings 5 to 9 on KCMO. Talk Radio 710, now on FM at 103.7. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Deep Talk on KCMO Talk Radio and 103.7. I love that song, Eric Clapton, My Father's Eyes. How appropriate for today. So we've just, you know, we just wrapped it up with Neil Donald Walsh. And, um, you know, there's, I mean, everything that he said is just for if if you don't believe or if it's hard for you to really get what he's saying and you want to learn more i really really recommend that you read his book he has um there are three books in his conversations with god series uh the first book is really all about you and your relationship and just you know some of the things that he said um you know when i asked him does god have desires and if so what does he desire and you know he said that you know god what he wants, if he does want anything from us, is, and it's not like he even actually wants anything, but what he desires maybe is for us to truly be fully self-expressed and to do whatever we got to do to live the life that we love. And, you know, when I, when I asked Neil, you know, what stops us? You know, in one word, it's fear. It really, then we talk about fear and we give so much um, power to our fear. Yet if we just took that time to spend with ourselves inward, you know, I had a conversation with my mother this morning about something I was fearful about. And um, when I got off the phone with her, I just was like thinking to myself, you know, I am not going to let this fear ruin my day, ruin my show and ruin my peace. So I, I just sat there. I, I, you know, I just sat on the couch and I got really quiet. And, you know, Neil said that the true path to God is inward, that the answer that you're looking for or that conversation or that relationship that you're looking for with God is uh, is inward. So and that's exactly what I did. I just had to sit and get really quiet and just talk to the God inside of me and say, you know, am I going to overcome this obstacle? You know, what is the gift in this obstacle? There must be something here for me to learn. And um I, I noticed that the, the more quiet that I got, the less, the less scared I was, the less anxious I was. And, you know, I'm just, I'm just kind of observing how I feel right now after this past hour of doing the show. And I feel great because everything that Neil was talking about was everything that I, I, I needed to hear today. So it's, I, I just think it's absolutely magical that I had this conversation with this particular guest today, you know, and I'm, I, I, I truly am extremely happy and blessed that I got to talk to him. He's a, he's a wonderful man, as you guys heard just now. So um, I wanted to leave you guys with um, one of my favorite quotes. I have many. But uh, the quote that I absol- absolutely love is, and the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. And that's by Anais Nin. And, you know, when I think of this quote, I think about all the things in my life I used to tolerate that used to be okay. You know, late night partying, you know, not taking care of my mind, spirit and soul. You know, my life was negotiable. And there came a day when my life was no longer negotiable and I wasn't willing to tolerate anything less than great for myself. So, you know, I want you guys to join the Source of Your Success coaching program. Make a difference in your life. Take the action. So call me at 913-951-1764. And until next time, you're listening to Deep Talk on KCMO Talk Radio 710. Be kind to yourself.